It's January the 3rd, 2018. This is Grant Cameron, and this is an update in the Pentagon UFO disclosure. I'd like to start again by a slide I've shown many times. There's a number of options of what might be going on with all these uh, newspaper articles, rumors, stories. The first possibility is that the government is disclosing and I maintain categorically they are not disclosing because if they wanted to disclose, they put up the president or the head of the CIA and tell us what's, not, what's going on. They are not disclosing, nor are they covering up. If they were to cover up, they would do what the Canadian and every other government in the world is doing, and that's just shut your mouth and not talk about it, and the story would go away. I maintain they're doing something in between. They're wrapping information with disinformation and putting the story out to continue to manage the story so it doesn't get out of control. I bring up a fourth one here because this one has been raised quite a bit in the last couple of days, and that is that all the stories, all the UFO stories over the years have been to disinform the UFO community. If that were true, it hasn't worked very well because all they've basically done is to try to hide the building, is to start the building on fire. It is quite clear that everybody now is inspired, lots of stories are being done by newspapers, so the idea that they may disinform people is to me totally crazy. In the last couple of days, uh, Tom DeLong, who is sort of the focal point of this latest UFO disclosure story, uh, put a message up and then pulled it down. He does this, um, I guess he's told to do this, I'm not sure why, but the idea is to put the message up, leave it up for a few minutes and then take it down. And he's actually quite happy about how the December 16th New York Times, Washington Post, Pentagon, or political story worked out. And he writes a letter to all the people, I'd like to thank you for your support. Um, and he goes through this whole thing about the fact that he's, he's very happy and that there's um, going to be more uh, trickle over the months ahead. I want to thank you all again. I am one of you. I am a truth seeker. And that was Tom DeLong. That was uh, December the 29th. So Tom is very happy about it, uh, says there's more stuff that's going to come out. And the guy, I believe, who runs his operation is Jim Semivan. Here's a photograph from New Year's that Jim had on his Facebook page, and he seems pretty happy about what's going on as well. So whatever was done, it appeared that it went as planned, and um, they are claiming, as are many people, that this is only the beginning of many leaks in the upcoming days and months. Um, these two men are key to the story. Harry Reid, Senator, former Senator Harry Reid on the left, and Bob Bigelow, both uh, from Nevada. Um, Reed, there was an article just today came out in a Nevada paper. Uh, Reed actually stated that it was John Glenn who helped inspire him to get this uh, $22 million funding to investigate UFOs. And Bob Bigelow uh, was questioned by this newspaper and he is no longer talking. Um, there's a number of uh, disclosure efforts that um, appear to be going on. The one that we most mostly talking about is the long um, operation with um, all the high-level military people and the stories coming out of the New York Times, Washington Post. Uh, but there's also a documentary um, that now I'm less certain is actually going on, and this is um, supposedly being run by uh, Dr. Ron Pandolfi, who is rumored to be the man who uh, may have briefed the last six presidents on UFOs, the man who controls the keys to the UFO story um, for the government. And um, there's a story that th this has been going on for a year now that they're going to do a documentary and it will de deal with the Avery and with um, the idea of a portal. And I have less faith that that may be actually what's going on. We got some indication something else might be going on. But anyway, we'll deal with that later on. The Condine is a, a UK report. This has been leaking out for the last year. And I'm again told that this stuff will be leaking. They said it by the end of last month, it didn't happen. 
Now they're saying this month uh, there are these files coming out wh where the UK will actually confirm um, the, the reality of um, the UFO that landed at Rendlesham in uh, 1980. And the last one is one that I brought up before, but again has been raised on Open Minds Forum, and that is this idea that Hollywood is dropping ideas into uh, different movies and documentaries. And the main one that it seems to have appeared in the last year is about portals. And as, interestingly, um, the guy who was the uh, liaison to Hollywood for the CIA, uh, when you check, you find out he's still a consultant in Hollywood. So it may be that kind of operation where, where Chase Brandon or somebody else is um, putting these ideas into documentary because there's a lot that do have uh, suddenly have these portals, which is, a, again, a story that there's a rumor that they're going to leak the portal technology, that this actually exists. They're going to make a confirmation. And a counterpart, you can see this show called Counterpart. I was actually contacted by somebody working on the show this is going back many, many months ago and telling me that he figured this was some sort of disclosure operation. Uh, the Beyond, A Wrinkle in Time. Um, and then there's one in Juman, uh, Jumani J uh, movie and Twin Peaks has portals. So you can see all these um, portals have suddenly appeared in Hollywood productions. Um, this is one that was very controversial. Um, one of my associates got a message after the Tom DeLonge um, story that said thank Donald Trump and um, um, one other researcher also confirmed to me that he got the message and uh, it may have come from Ronald Pandolfi that's what we think and a lot of people and today I got a third message which again in indicated that uh, Donald Trump may have given authorization for this uh, latest disclosure there's a, a lot of opposition to this there's a lot of people who uh, have what I think is more like a conspiratorial views that uh, Donald Trump is not read in, that Donald Trump's an idiot, that he uh, doesn't know anything about anything, and that there's some sort of cabal running the show and Donald Trump every day takes orders from somebody and is only doing what he's told or is not told anything. Uh, I'm more of a person that believes um, that the U.S. government works by the Constitution, that there are many high-level people in the government, and that if everybody was violating the Constitution, someone would take a walk. We've had 14 administrations that have dealt with this subject. Nobody's taken a walk. So I firmly believe that this thing is being run by the law, and according to many uh, strict rules, and I'll get into that a little bit later, uh, we actually have somebody who's very uh, up on security and how this works. Uh, who is about to answer some questions for me, and I think he will confirm this is one of the questions I put to him. Is the government uh, run by the law, or is it, uh, you know, anybody can do whatever they want? Uh, the idea was that Donald Trump didn't even know about the $22 million story till four days after uh, the story broke in the New York Times, which is um, pretty hard to believe because the rumor is that he, he watches uh, um, TV news, Fox News, four to eight hours a day, and follows what's going on in the New York Times. And we know that the, uh, the $22 million UFO study story ran in the Fox on exactly the same day uh, that it was broken in the New York Times. And it seems quite unbelievable that Donald Trump didn't see that. Uh, on the third day um, after the, um, the story broke in the New York Times, uh, his press secretary took a question on UFOs. And the press secretary stated that the office knew that that story was there and that they might take a question, but they didn't think anybody would ask the question. So it seems very unlikely that everybody in the White House knew what was going on except for the president. Uh, so I think this is more sort of an old conspiratorial theory that um, that there's um, some dark force that's running the UFO cover up. I firmly believe it is being done by the law and by the constitution. And there's another story that came up that said um, that Mullis, the, um, the director of, um, or the Secretary of Defense, didn't know that Lou Elizondo, why he had resigned for three months, that he didn't know until um, the day, the night before the story broke. And that seems highly unlikely that he wouldn't know uh, that his top aide, why, why this guy resigned. So this is, goes back to this Trump thing. Does, does Trump know? And um, this is up in the air. Some people say he doesn't. I believe that he he was briefed, and I mentioned this in many past things as to exactly who briefed him, when the briefing took place, uh, in terms of the UFO subject in general. 
uh, this is one of the things that's uh, come up. Uh, there's a, a lot of controversy now about um, this um, video that has come out. And uh, one of the things that we noticed was that the Washington Post uh, gives credit for the video to, uh, to the Stars Academy, whereas the New York Times gave credit for the video to the Department of Defense. So a lot of confusion came about uh, what happened with this, uh, with this not, not so much the story, but the $22 million uh, program, but about the video that was attached to the New York Times story. Um, the CIA has, at the same time, and that story was supposed to be a defense intelligence agency uh, story um, th that was the, um, the video of the, the Nimitz. And then a couple of days later, the CIA again puts up this photograph uh, and says, you know, it has an article on how to, how to photograph a UFO. So you have both the defense intelligence agency and the CIA uh, leaking this stuff into the public. Um, now, the, the video problem, this is one of the things that rose after the, the story broke, is there was people claiming that there was a problem with the video that was released. So I'll just quickly go through the controversy that arose and what people are saying. Uh, you have a $22 million program. Nobody disputed that. That was um, not questioned. Uh, there was a statement that there was 24 videos. So there's one, the one that was released had some controversy around it. But you have got to keep in mind there are uh, 24 videos. So, the, so um, whether the first one is good or bad doesn't really matter because there, apparently there's a lot and they're all coming out. And um, there's material, there's hardware, which is what I've heard maybe the next shoe to drop that they're actually going to uh, bring this hardware. Uh, photos are very easy to discredit. Everybody knows that with modern uh, technology, it, uh, photographic evidence is almost uh, useless. Uh, but if they start bringing out material uh, with uh, bizarre uh, characteristics to it, um, then you're going to see a little bit different um, reaction because it's a little harder to discredit that kind of stuff. And apparently the material is coming out. And there are supposedly 74 reports, 38, and then 36 technical reports that are, that are also uh, coming out. And there's an experience or study which uh, very much interests me that's also coming out. But the, the, the problem with this video, we'll go through the, the problems here. Um, it, one of the things that came out was, and we knew this right from the word go, on the day that it was released, um, I've known some reporters, I got one of the reporters to get uh, permission from his editor to file an FOIA. And he, he got the permission, uh, they filed the FOIA, he was asking me who to file it with. At first we were going to file it with the uh, uh, Department of Defense, and it turned out it was a defense intelligence agency and uh, they've actually moved it, the defense department moved it there. But the, the key issue of the video was nobody's disputing the $22 million study, but immediately the defense department said, we did not release a video. And uh, this reporter asked him, well, you know, what do I do, where do I go? And he said, I, I'm sorry, sorry, I can't help you with that. And that is a story that now the, the newspapers have sort of picked up is the fact that um, there's sort of a backtracking and this has to do with this video. Um, as you can see here, it's acknowledged it was um, uh, CNN ran the story and said that the, 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 there was a, an acknowledgement by the Department of Defense. The Depar Department of Defense is saying absolutely they did not give authorization for this video. So or they did not release the video, pardon me. Um, this is a statement, I went back and looked at the statement because the big uh, person that's behind this whole thing is Bob Bigelow and there was a number of interviews where he had sort of hinted the fact as to what was going to happen and this is 2013 uh, interview that he did with George Knapp and in that he actually basically says this is coming. He said, I think that there is a sub rosa and effective sympathy towards this in other areas and circles that might be government connected that may feel the time is right for more honest delivery of the truth connected to the existence of the phenomena. So Bob had uh, actually stated in uh, 2007 that he had a new partner and that he was working on this thing. Then in 2013, he again says that he uh, believes what he was, he calls it confirmation that they would confirm, which is the story I heard, which turned out to be true, that high-level government officials would come out, they would identify themselves as high-level officials, and they would say the phenomena is for real. Um, uh, so the story that Elizondo uh, gave 
was that he had made arrangements with the Navy and a program office uh, within the, the Undersecretary for Intelligence to release the F-18 uh, videos. Um, I, uh, th this controversy raged and then um, uh, Dr. Um, Eric Davis came up and I've known him for a number of years and I say he's highly reliable. He has worked, um, he was the chief uh, physicist for the NIDS group, a very, very sharp guy, now working as assistant to Dr. Harold Putoff. And I say whatever he says, you can basically take to the bank. Um, we put some questions to him and he's actually gonna answer a number of questions that I have about this. But he did answer the question about the video and with this confusion about the fact that um, the Defense Department is not making, um, you know, acknowledging it or, or what this whole controversy is about. And this is what he said. Yes, the U.S. Navy, Naval Intelligence, and all the fighter pilots interviewed by the Naval Investigation into the Encounters had confirmed the reality of the FLIR videos, including the associated radar data. This data was stored in a program office's archives. The data got declassified and released to the public, but the chain of custody remains classified to prevent tipping off foreign enemies on the identities of intelligence personnel, their assigned offices, specific intelligence programs that were involved, and the technology content or, uh, origin, the data itself, content origin, the data itself. So no, the chain of custody will likely never been revealed to perfect to protect highly classified uh, highly sensitive sources and methods. This is standard military intelligence protocol. So basically what it is, is that this, um, th there is a, a chain, um, sort of a chain of custody uh, that I guess was confirmed by the New York Times, but it remains classified. So you have the video, uh, but I guess there's always gonna be this um, controversy about the, the chain of command actually proving that this is a, a, a actual uh, video from the Defense Department. Uh, the second problem that came up, and this again came up on number one day, and this was later became very questionable. On the number one, on the day that the, the video was released, the Defense Department said that they didn't release anything. And this, on the very same day, Ron Pandolfi, uh, this man who's sort of rumored to be the CIA guy and that briefs the president and in charge of this thing, immediately, within hours, called it a hoax. And he, he said uh, this is his um, sort of his guy who, who puts his sort of statements out. This is uh, Dan Smith said Ron called to say that the allegations of the Nimitz encounter are a scam engineered by Helen Coots with his old friend Leslie Kane. Uh, the two articles would never have made it past the editors in the old days. But now the New York Times is desperate for readership along with all the other outlets. And I guess we should let people know that um, I just learned today uh, there's at least one more article that's been worked on by the New York Times because somebody contacted me who was interviewed for it. So uh, Ron immediately called it and, and, and the question is, how did he call it so fast? And that's when I started to think that maybe um, he had something to do with this, um, this claim of uh, this video that came out because he knew right from the word go, he said that this, this was a hoax. And then on January the 1st, uh, there was another indication that maybe he was behind it, and that was his spokesman, Dan Smith, stated, uh, the, and they write in this poetic sort of way, uh, Dan Smith writes, uh, there are three of us. I have the truth of the kingdom. The princess, who is Ron Pandolfi's wife, has the key to the kingdom. Footman, that's Ron Pandolfi, is our foot soldier. He is in the chain of command. He is point man, he, writes, he rides shotgun, if you will. The opening salvo of our campaign has been fired. It was a shot heard around the world. Our gray lady, and the gray lady is the New York Times, has opened Pandora's box. He continues, that's all folks. The trap has been set, the honey pot has been set out, the bees are already on the scent. Are we talking months or years? Maybe we're talking weeks. So when I saw that, I immediately wrote Dan Smith and I said, are you making a claim that Ron Pandolfi was behind this leak? And at that point, he said, we'll take the credit if no one else wants to. And when I made that public, then all hell broke loose. And it, it was, um, 
the, like the, the, the Hadfields and the McCoys. And it was like uh, just really um, sort of a battle from the other side. And this is the side with Tom DeLong and not so much Tom DeLong, but er Eric Davis stepped in. And um, the, the story, of course, uh, that Ron Pandolfi had actually uh, put into uh, WikiLeaks through Julian Assange was the fact that this was faked. And so Eric Davis came back and Eric is, has been around for a long time. Uh, he knows all the players in the intelligence community. And he said Pandolfi and, and his metal, uh, mentally ill twit bird, Dan Smith, had no role in the New York Times article or in Lou Elizondo's AATIP program at DOD. My boss, who's hell put off, and I were, were subcontractors to Bass, which was the contractor of record to the Luis Elizondo program. Nobody associated with the program wanted anything to do with Pendolfi before and after he left the CIA. He had a very bad reputation with, with the intelligence community. So I posed some other questions. I'll leave those related to this statement here. Uh, but he basically shot back that, um, as far as he's concerned, um, Ron Pendolfi had nothing to do with it. Uh, the key um, that I... Uh, think may have something to do with it is Ron if this is a constitutional system Ron is the guy that should be running the whole operation and the other thing was that um, I was told and this goes back at least a year a year and a half ago that when Jim Semivan who runs the Tom DeLong operation um, left the CIA he was briefed on UFOs and the briefing was done by Dr. Ronald Bandolfi uh, I've written a lot about Pandolfi over the years, and the only time they ever wanted to correct me, Dan Smith challenged me uh, to stop talking about something, to change something, and that was when I brought up the name Jim Semivan. And that may be because this was the main man. And if they were, if, if Ron was running this operation, uh, and I picked up on the main guy who's running it, it was at that point they said he didn't exist. Then when I showed them photographs of Jim Semivan, then the story changed. Oh, he did exist, but that's not his name. And that is, I think, the story they're sticking to right now is that uh, they have no association with Jim Semivan. But if you look at the, as I pointed out in past updates, if you look at Tom DeLong's operation, you'll see all sorts of ex-CIA people in all sorts of categories that are on his board. And I find it very hard to believe that uh, Ron Pandolfi, if he is with the CIA, doesn't know who all these people are and all these players are. So the problem three is the video itself. Uh, this has been gone through. I'm not going to go through it in this video. Uh, there was uh, John Lear and other people who claimed that there was problems with the video, the audio in the video. Uh, the, the fact that the thing stayed in the middle of the, the, the screen, uh, the way these guys were talking. There was all sorts of things, but I'm not going to go into that. What I will point out at this point um, is the fact that this is not the first time that video came up. Everybody sort of assumes this is new, this is unique. This video was around before. This video uh, had been leaked into the internet, um, I'm not sure how long, at least six months ago or more, and then it was pulled from the internet, and I have a friend in Europe who's very good at audio and video, and he told me where to find it. So here's the original video. It uh, doesn't have the voice that you hear on the, the one that was released uh, in connection with the New York Times article, but um, here is the uh, other video, and you will see it's a little bit different. It actually has a daytime shot at the end of it, but it appears um, to be sort of the same, um, taken at the same time. So the, the question with this is that, um, why was this video leak pulled and then why did it suddenly appear in the New York Times with uh, oversight over it? So here you have this video and a couple of people have put this video up, but this video was on the internet um, earlier last year and then disappeared off the internet and we happened, happened to find it in an archives. Now the Tom DeLong trailer, people will say, well, they don't believe this could actually happen, you could actually change it. Um, I don't have the copyright to the trailer, uh, but Tom, the Tom DeLong, one of the trailers was changed. And I could show it, but I don't have copyright to show it. Um, there's a trailer, and in the trailer it is redone, um, and the word threatening is taken out of the trailer. And um, I, I think I've showed it in one lecture, but uh, it, it, there has been a, a, 
a change in a video that came out of the Tom DeLong camp. I'm not saying Tom DeLong did it. I think Tom DeLong is just doing what he's told and that there are some very high level people who are uh, carefully um, un unveiling this program. And with all the people, whoever they are, I believe they're all just doing their job and they are doing what they think is best to get this story out. And I do believe this story, this whole thing is to get this story out uh, without the, with the least amount of trouble. And I think they're all working for the same ends. Uh, here's a silver lining to this whole thing. Uh, there's, as, even though there's controversy now with this uh, video, um, and, and the thing is that this is only one video. There are 24 videos. Uh, so this, uh, people that think this story is over are sadly mistaken. Um, I've heard some of the stuff that's going to happen, and uh, it's not over by a long shot. It has only begun. Uh, the second thing is um, it gave power to a dead story. If you remember when Tom DeLong did his um, October the 11th uh, news conference, it was kind of big. Nobody really picked up on it. The media didn't pick up on it, and the story went away. And everybody had sort of forgotten about the story. Everybody was saying Tom DeLong was a big scam artist, that he uh, was just trying to gather money, that he wasn't going to produce anything, and this is all just to get people's money. And then suddenly, uh, December the 16th, when the video comes out, then suddenly Tom DeLong is uh, the new Jesus. He's like the Messiah. And suddenly everybody thinks he's, he's walking on water. So you got to remember that uh, this revived that, that Tom DeLong uh, promise already made in October when they already in October said they had the videos. Uh, the next thing is uh, congressional hearings. Um, Senator, uh, former Senator Harry Reid has called for congressional hearings. Tom DeLong indicates that congressional hearings were, will happen. So if people wanted this as disinformation and to throw people off the UFO subject, the, the horse may already be out of the barn. It may be over already that we are going to have some sort of congressional hearing and people are going to end up starting to testify under oath as to what's going on here. Uh, the media is now awake. That's probably the biggest thing is hundreds of media outlets did this story and the consciousness has been raised. The media realized they've been, they've been had. There wasn't a, a question into the White House press room. And even though I have contacted that reporter a couple times, uh, he still has not come back to go back to the press secretary and get the answer to his question. Does Donald Trump believe in UFOs? And is he going to refund this program to investigate UFOs? But the media is now doing stories, and um, I've heard a number of different rumors of different media that are, that are not only just repeating other people's stories, but are actually doing their own research. And some of these have very powerful um, sources inside the government. And I'm talking mostly about the Washington Post and the New York Times, who have sources who can get into intelligence and can get actual answers that the average uh, reporter on the street uh, cannot get. Uh, this whole story, the December 16th thing, uh, may have speeded up the dumping where people are now starting to dump. I have numerous people coming to me with various stories that I never would have got before, uh, inside stories and stuff like that. So it's almost like people have been now been given permission to talk about this and people are starting to talk. Uh, this is uh, sort of where I'll leave it. Uh, this is one of uh, the uh, people who's working with Tom DeLong. Uh, this is Gary Nolan, it's from Stanford University, and uh, he posted, because uh, he's on the inside as well, he knows what's happening, he says, you ain't seen nothing yet, and that's exactly what I've heard. Uh, uh, as I said, Nolan is part of this group where they're working with experiencers, where they're working on the brain pattern and the DNA of experiencers and people who have been injured by UFOs. So he said, you ain't seen nothing yet. And then uh, the source who has been the best for me over the last uh, two and a half years on this story, uh, this is what he told me the day it happened. And this is, I believe, from what I've heard, uh, I do know there is a whole lot more to come. This was just enough to pop the bubble, just enough to make us beg for more, just enough to create a, a, a frenzy. I am told that over the next month, it's going to get very real. And I've heard the same thing. So I want to thank you for listening, and I'll do another update once I get the answers from uh, Dr. Eric Davis, uh, who is uh, one of the people on the inside and who also understands how intelligence works and how these programs uh, work inside the American government. Thanks for listening.